Well, Mike, we've talked to the Boeing folks about the laser they put on here. Talk, you guys build the vehicle, and there are a lot of these vehicles in service. So A, how do you fit a laser in here, and B, what are the other upgrades you're planning and inventing for the Stryker fleet? Well, we've been working on this with the, the Space and Missile Defense Command for almost five years, so this is not a new thing for us. We've overcome a lot of, I'll call it challenges, with putting a laser on this vehicle, providing enough power, providing enough cooling. Uh, finally, in this uh, situation, we've got it integrated onto the platform. So the same monitors that we use on a day-to-day -day basis for our soldiers, all the feeds from the, from the uh, uh, laser uh, range finder and everything else show up on that screen. It's not a standalone uh, operation, which is a really good thing. It saves space, it saves weight, it conserves power. But the other thing we've done... So the, just make sure, sure I understand, there's not a separate set of controls and screens and displays no. that are stuck in there. It's all in the same thing that they use for their run, for example, the the, the machine gun and other things. Uh, weapon station, any of their uh, mapping, all of their GPS, it's all on the same screen. So you can move, you can, it's like an app. Right, so you hit an app for for the laser, and then you'll see the picture that the laser shows you from its uh, fire direction uh, controls. The laser here is fully integrated. It's not just a not just clutched on. It's actually pretty smoothly integrated into the vehicle and running off the same controls. And you still have room for the machine gun. You still have room for a number of passengers in back, even. Yes, and it, this vehicle, uh, you know, allows a crew to manage all of these subsystems because this is a, an air defense kind of system on the front edge of the battlefield. So the problem that the Army's facing right now are swarms of drones, and this particular kind of capability will allow them to defeat those drones with very low cost. I think it, it's about five bucks a shot. And it, As opposed it, to shooting a surface-to-air missile at everyone. Yeah, at everyone. And I don't know what the surface-to-air missiles cost. And they have a place on the battlefield, too. They have a place on the battlefield for the larger um, uh, missiles that come in and those kinds of intercepts that are required. But for $500 UAVs, uh, you know, five-buck shot, shoot them down. The other thing that's interesting is not only with SMDC did we integrate the laser, we also integrated an electronic warfare system that will interfere with the signals that are going to the drone. So on the got, same vehicle? On the same vehicle, on using the, the same technology, using the same radars that, that uh, vector in on the, the, the drone. And so you can do one of two things. You can either interfere with the signals so that the, they can't pass things back to their station, or you can kill them. And if you jam the signal, it may just fall out of the sky because they can't control it, potentially. That's true. That's true. So you've got multiple ways of dealing with the problem. And if you have more than one UAV up there, maybe you use both of them simultaneously. So they have a lot of options with a multi-mission vehicle like this. Now, this is a frontline battlefield system, so you need to put it on a combat vehicle. And the Striker is the most effective and efficient combat uh, vehicle that has the capability of hosting all of this. I mean, the tanks have a mission, and their mission is to tank on tank. Bradley's have the infantry fighting mission, so you do. And they're also short on power, as I recall. They have a lot of, their electronics are pretty much maxed out. Well, a lot of the Army's platforms are pretty much maxed out because they keep putting more things on them, right? They keep putting more things that require more power. But they have a mission set of their own that's different than defeating this drone capability that our, our future adversaries are going to have. And so you need to have a vehicle that's adaptable. And the Striker seems to be the most adaptable combat vehicle available to the Army right now. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for being drafted at the last minute. And oh, you're I've welcome.